Good evening and a very warm welcome, Dr. Kumar Doctor, and all our wonderful audience to the seventh pillar of positivity. I care for you. This is a truly special webinar because Dr. Kumar and I, we went to med school together. And as you will see, he is this wonderful combination of wit and intelligence topped with incredible skills that make him one of our best eye care specialists in the country. So please do pay special attention to all he will enlighten us with today on how to keep our eyes healthy, especially in COVID times. It's also a very special day for the other eye, this is, that is prana, because we are happy to announce that we are going beyond plasma donations in this pandemic. We have just launched our blood and platelet donation project. And we were so blessed to have our very first donation yesterday. And as always, we are incredibly grateful to each and every one of our donors, our team members, who are all the pillars of Prana. When I look back at the almost four months since Prana was born, I never imagined this baby would grow so quickly. We just had a hundredth bag of plasma donated last week, which would have possibly benefited 200 recipients. Another milestone is that we have had two of our incredibly selfless and admirable donors donate for the fifth time each, last week in Bangalore and just yesterday here in Bombay. Once again, our deepest gratitude to them. So while Prana continues to work towards our next century, we can't do it alone. We are really very happy that perhaps many of you in the audience today have recovered from COVID-19. But please seize this moment. Come forward and be a superhero for someone not as fortunate as you. Your plasma, which is the liquid part of your blood, has life-saving antibodies that, that could reduce the suffering for another. We do encourage male donors in the age group of 18 to 55 years who are otherwise healthy. There is a specific timing for plasma donation, which is typically 28 days after being symptom-free, and thereafter one can donate every 15 days, depending on the screening test. It's easy, it's safe, and it's just as simple as blood donation. And we have several of our donors to vouch for this. So please don't miss this chance to give prana or life the biggest gift of all in this pandemic to somebody who is suffering from COVID-19. I make this earnest request to each and every one of you to encourage anyone within your friends and family circle to come forward and talk to us or register on our website pranapanindia.com as a donor. Similarly, if any one of your loved ones is in need of convalescent plasma, we are here and happy to help them. Please do go ahead and register them as a recipient on our website. As we are all eagerly awaiting this presentation, I am reminded of Emerson's words. The health of the eye requires a horizon. And I can't think of anyone better than Dr. Kumar Doctor to widen your view and channel your vision towards all that's bright and beautiful around you. So here you go, eye to eye with Dr. Kumar, Doctor. Uh, thank you, Maria. Uh, and congratulations to you because to get 100 donors for plasma was a brilliant achievement and that took four months. I think you're doing a great job. And uh, I thank you once again to have given this opportunity to me to have 
contributed to a little bit of understanding and clearing all the myths uh, that is there about screen and digital age, which is there, which are facing today. All of you can see the screen, Maria? Yes. Yes. All is good. So, we start today's topic about eye care. And some of you who have want to do you can go on to our channel of YouTube of mine called iLogs. And that's more information about general eye care. And I truly believe in this, that if you get an opportunity to care for ones who cared for you, it's one of the highest honors you can get. So we being in the medical fraternity, we face this on a daily basis and we are all there. And I think, Maria, that you're doing is something beyond what you did. I don't know how you got this brilliant idea to start this project, but congratulations to you and your whole team, because it's a lot of effort to get this rolling. And I think you are rocking because the whole project is doing very, very well. Thank you so much. Now about today's house story. So here I don't know when you see an image like this and you feel that your wife is sad or not because the poor husband is working from home every day. So it's a thing that we all are facing in today's house. And even what is more surprising is this. Suddenly this image is black and white because I'm not, I used to be a newspaper reader every day in the morning. I have not held a newspaper since the last so many months. Although it has started now, and you all know that the publications are down and everything has become digital. So I'm going to go to today's topic as to what really we are going to discuss and how we are going to go about it. So today's topic is about COVID. Okay, and the eyes and eye health in digital age, facts and friction. So let's clarify all the doubts that are there because I get lots of questions on a daily basis today. So there's some places where the antivirus will not work. So this is, I believe in this, that the doctor antivirus is not going to help you, even if you wear it like this. But I'll tell you a real story that happened in Wuhan, China. You'll be surprised, friends, that the whistleblower was actually an eye doctor. His name was Dr. Lee Pinglang. And it's a sad story because he was 33 years old. And in his hospital in Wuhan, he used to see lots of patients with conjunctivitis on a daily basis. And he thought that something is wrong because how come so many patients are coming with a red eye? And unfortunately, he lost his battle to the COVID virus. And he's no longer with us. And that's the reason why I said that this is a sad story. A 33-year-old uh, doctor, uh, a warrior, we lost to this problem. So this is really a fact. This is no longer an imagination. So there is a thought in some people that it affects only lungs. So this is fiction. Okay, it goes much beyond. In eyes, it can cause optic neuritis. We have two eyes. There is a nerve which sends the vessel to the brain. And that's called the optic nerve. It's known to cause inflammation of the optic nerve. It can affect blood vessels. and That's the reason why it can cause an occlusion in the retina. And the most combination that we see is red eye. So these are facts about COVID-19 and your eyes. So what else does it do? How else does it affect? It affects in many ways. And that's the reason why we say today, the best thing to do is to wear a mask so that your mouth and your nose are protected. That's step one. You wear your glasses. So even if you don't have a number and you're traveling on the road, Maybe you want to wear goggles or zero number glasses. And the best thing is to wear a face shield. If you wear a face shield, it is further going to protect. It. So this is very common. So I used to see some patients of conjunctivitis in December. Actually, that's when the whole episode started. And if we had done that test that time, you may have found that they were COVID positive. So this is a known reality that yes, it does affect eyes and it does cause conjunctivitis. Now, the most common question that I get asked in my clinic on a daily basis, you'd be surprised. Does looking at the screen every day for eight hours increase my glass numbers? Many times I get mothers saying that, you know, he's been watching the TV for eight hours and then he's on the mobile, he's got his glasses on the mobile. And so the reason why his number has increased, does that really happen? Lying down and reading, will it worsen the number? Eating more carrots, will it remove the glass number? So I always get patients asking that, why don't we give him more of carrot juice? His number will go. Does that really happen? And is there any radiation that is coming out of the screen 
like mobiles, iPads, computers, etc., that cause the number of the glass to increase. So I want to clear these myths that we all have, and which I see on a day-to-day basis. So is there anything radiating out? So let's clarify all this one by one, okay? So this is friction, okay? So this is no longer a reality, and I want to completely clear these doubts. So looking at the screen every day for eight hours called something called as computer vision syndrome. What is computer vision syndrome? And what it really causes, we'll go into details of this. Lying down and reading causes strain. And how does it do that? So we clarify that. Eating more carrots, which is vitamin A, is good for the health of the retina. It has nothing to do with the glasses. So if your child has got a number, you give him one glass of carrot juice every day or he eats raw carrot every day and he goes out and, and you think that the number is going to disappear by eating carrots is really not going to happen. So get that off. And there is no radiation coming out of the computer or from the mobile or from the iPad that causes the number of glass to increase. What actually it is emitting is something called as a blue light is emitted from these devices. Now how does this light affect us? What exactly is this light is what I'm going to clarify. So this is our daily image today. School from home, a completely new normal. And the fear we have here is something called as the blue light. But before we go to the depth of blue light, I want to make you understand a little bit about light. I want to go into physics because it's a little complicated. But here the light or the visible light is called the electromagnetic radiation within the portion of electromagnetic spectrum. So there's a whole spectrum, okay? And in that, we have something called a visible light. So let's see how visible light looks. So you can see that this is the visible light. This is called the visible light in this area. Above that is the gamma rays, and the other side is the shock wave. So this portion of visible light, so you can see from 400 nanometers to 700 and beyond nanometers is the visible light, okay? So different frequencies, of the electromagnetic wave which are produced have different kinds of colors of light. So you can see that in the visible spectrum, you're getting something from violet to extreme deep red. Beyond this, we don't see the colors. So we don't see X-rays, we don't see ultraviolet light, we don't see gamma rays, and that's how this is actually done. So the frequencies lesser than visible light are infrared or our microwave or our radio waves. Frequency greater than visible light are called ultraviolet lights, X-rays, which we get X-rays done from our chest or hand or fractures or whatever, and gamma radiation. So this is our day-to-day -day use. So you can see that radio waves are there, microwaves are there, ultraviolet lights are there, and then there's X-ray, and then there is gamma ray. So this is how it is actually in full spectrum. So let's look at the same spectrum in more depth. So if light is visible, it corresponds to different colors. So why are human beings able to see different colors in the visible spectrum? Of course, you don't have to be colorblind, so don't get confused there. Is that you will see the wave light of a visible spectrum of different colors only in a range from 400 to 800. Now, what happens in blue light? As I mentioned earlier, the blue light is emitted from iPads, mobiles, computers, etc., all devices. So let's look at this more in depth. So this is the visible light, which you can see. This is the non-visible light, which is the infrared. And this is the non-visible light, the other end of the spectrum, which is the ultraviolet light. So ultraviolet light is harmful. It can cause crack and is related to each other. You know, so you know the non-visible light, ultraviolet light can cause this damage. So coming to the visible light, there is something called as the blue light. So there is something in the blue light which affects your yeah, cycle. Your voice is breaking up, please. Can you get the mic closer? I'm so sorry. Yeah. Tell me about this. Now you can hear me? Yeah, a little better. Yes, thank you. Okay. So, on the blue light, there is something about the blue light which affects the sleep cycle. Okay, the rest of the visible light is called the beneficial light. So, there is a little gray area here in the blue light which is the visible light. Coming to the non-visible light, which is infrared, which is also harmful, and it can also cause a cataract. So now, 
we don't talk about the non-visible light. Our talk today is entirely about the visible light. Now, how to protect our eyes from the visible spectrum and upon these blue glasses? So the blue light that is it, uh, emitted from all these devices <coughs> actually inhibits the production of melatonin in the body. Why is blue light necessary in these devices? Like phone, tablet, laptops, televisions, because it's a bright light. So all these devices use this wavelength of light. LED devices also have blue light. There is a steady exposure of these gadgets which emit blue light for children, for ourselves, for our adults. Now, is it good for health or not? There's no doubt that blue light inhibits production melatonin, which is very essential for good sleep. Lower levels of melatonin in our body can cause mood fluctuations, can cause depression, can cause obesity, can cause even heart diseases. So it is known that melatonin levels in the body have to be well maintained. So what happens, we won't believe that there are tablets for melatonin available. These are sold in the US and all over. They say that take this tablet before you take a flight. It is to prevent a jet lag so that you can sleep well. But if you're normal, it doesn't really benefit as much as what it is supposed to be. So the summary here is never lie down and dream. So when you're lying on a TV, a light from behind, a shadow of your head falls onto the screen. If that happens, then again, we are going to strain our eyes. Why no gadgets for anybody, adults or children, in the night before sleeping? Because the blue light that comes out of the screen actually prevents your melatonin from production. Because of that, the sleep cycle is affected. That's the reason why no gadgets at night. So this is a complete no. Melatonin is essential for sleep. This is a fact. For sleep, for health, we need sleep, we need exercise, and we need diet. So three things which are the main pivots for our health. So blue light glasses, are they a reality? Do they really help? It is a fact of fiction. The fact is, yes, this is a reality, and blue light glasses are available. So there is something, if you use an iPhone, there's something called as the night mode. When you put the night mode on, you can put a timer on, and you see the whole screen light becomes uh, lesser. So it's emitting less blue light. And there are computer glasses also available, which have a filter for the blue light to watch the computer. That way it does help. Now coming to what is computer vision syndrome, it sounds very big, it sounds like a big syndrome, but today's world, digital age and eye health. So we go into a little bit of depth of what is computer vision syndrome, Okay, so you can see that these are the devices that are there today. You have the iPad, you have the computer, you have a main computer, everything is there. And this can happen. All of us are facing this in today's world. So many options of devices. What actually is computer vision It can cause eye strain, it can lead to so eyes and eye fatigue and headache. Near vision becomes blurred. When you're looking far away, and then suddenly you look at the computer and it takes you time to focus. That means something's wrong. Focusing becomes as a process. The tolerance of light that you're getting from the computer becomes less. You may get eye irritation, you get morning dryness and redness. So you basically have eye eyes, it will worsen. What actually happens is if you have wet contact lenses, it's more discomfort pain because of dry eyes, you may have a neck and a shoulder pain. That all depends on how much time you're studying. So if you are working, let's say, on a computer for eight to nine hours a day, not tell you is our blink rate. Okay. What is very, very important, do not watch a computer like this. So they say that extended arm length is a necessity to watch the computer and that's how your monitor distance should be and this is a complete no, no. This is not allowed at all. This is how it should be positioning of the computer. Always straight so that your neck posture, etc. Otherwise you have pain in the neck, pain in the back, and the lower back and pain in the elbow. So if you're sitting in the straight direction, you have this distance, and at the eye level, this rule is the screen should be about six to seven, eight inches below the eye level. You can increase font size. In today's world, you can increase font size of the computer, you can increase the font size of your mobile device, and that makes your way much more easy. Very important message is do not forget to 
This for your information is the normal blink rate when we are talking to each other is about 27 per minute. When you're working on a computer, the blink rate drops to seven per minute. That leads to dry eyes, discomfort, irritation, redness, and that is called computer vision syndrome. So this is very, very important. Keep the brightness of the screen that is acceptable to your eyes, not too much glare. Very important, make sure that your shadow does not fall on the scene when you're working. Make sure that the lights are on and so that that reflection does not come onto your screen. Increase the font size whenever you're comfortable and do not forget to play. So the somebody here is this is called computer vision syndrome and this does affect and cause tryness more prone to infections. So there is a rule in ophthalmology called 20-20-20. Take 20 seconds break every 20 minutes. Look at something far away and then refocus onto the screen and don't forget to blink more often. This is a rule as far as we go. There are UV film glasses available. They are also, these are called clip ons. On your normal glasses, you can put these clip ons. There are more fancier ones which are also available which will help you. Now, what exactly is UV light? The UV light that is ultraviolet light is again the invisible vector. There are three types of UV lights. Don't get this UV, B, and C. The C gets blocked at ozone level, so it gets blocked in the sky above and it doesn't cross the road. And we know that this UV light, if it falls on the skin, it causes sand. But in the eyes, it can cause pterygium. Pterygium is this big light structure that comes from the sclera and goes on to the cornea. It can also cause a cataract. So you know that the white thing that the eye comes, this is called cataract. And it can cause degeneration of the retina. It's called ARMD, age rated degeneration of the retina. So, ultraviolet light is known to cause this as far as human eyes go. So, what is important to the goggles? Remember, when you have ultraviolet light, it reflects from surfaces. So if you go to a sea resort, the sand always reflects UV light coming from the sun. Remember this. So, to wear goggles, we protect you. From ultraviolet light and your eyes is very, very essential. The other surface that reflects ultraviolet light is the snow. So remember this that snow also reflects. That if you see people are skiing, wear those nice big glasses. They're just not show, they're just not for protection from the wind, but they are UV bubbles. And that's the reason why it protects your retina from age related degeneration. In today's era, the implants that we are putting in the eye are already UV protected. So when you have a cataract surgery, you really don't have to say this to a doctor, but the implant that we put inside the eye is also UV protected. So in conclusion, the take home message is that yes, cold does affect the eyes, right? So be careful, protect yourself, wear a mask, etc. In digital gadgets, emit blue light. So we know that to Wear blue light or blue coating that is necessary to protect your eyes, take precautions. And you can take more precautions as I mentioned about night patches. Please do not use this because it will reduce your melatonin uh, secretion and that will affect your sleep pattern. That is what gets affected. Very important. Blink more often. Have a right posture when you're working on the computer. And if you get dry eyes and you're wearing contact lenses while you're using a computer, use eye lubricants for computer usage. No lying down reading, no lying down uh, and seeing television. Use distance. Now, you won't believe I had a patient uh, back and says, Doctor, you gave me this distance number, you gave me this read number, I'm watching television and not able to see the number of television at all, the number that you gave. So I asked the patient with eyes, I so he said, and I put on my reading glasses and I can't see the television. It's bound to be because television is at a distance. Right? And for reading, you can make press biopic glasses, which is for reading, or you can make progressive glasses, which is for reading. So these are the take home messages as far as this one was concerned. I'm now open to ask any questions. I'll stop sharing so that all of you can then have a discussion and we can go ahead. Thank you, Dr. Kumar, for all those pearls of wisdom, especially on alerting us to how 
COVID-19 can present in the eye with conjunctivitis, uh, protecting our eyes with glasses or goggles, and mainly for busting all the myths which are related with the use of blue screens and uh, posture or vitamin A and the computer vision syndrome. Uh, we will now be taking questions. You can either post it into the chat box or on Facebook, please post the questions and uh, we will have uh, Dr. Kumar, doctor, answer them for you. Uh, I have the first question which is lined up uh, and that is uh, how useful are eye drops and should we always resort to them? So what happens is if you're working eight hours on a computer or your children are looking at the screen for six to eight hours because all uh, line classes are on screen and nobody's going to school anymore, then yes, because we are blinking less, it will lead to dry eyes. So it's like you have a dry skin, we apply a cream skin and that's like vaccine or any cream that applies to like a moisturizer. So these drops are for artificial, they are actually artificial details. They are lubricants. They are very, very safe to use. So whether you or your children use it five, six, seven times a day, you use it even 10 times a day, no side effects. But this is essential to maintain the healthiness of the tear film of the eye. If your tear film is good, you can see that. If your tear film breaks down, your visibility goes down. That's the reason why I said, when you're using the computer, suddenly sometimes you don't focus. And the reason being is your tear film is broken down and you've got dry eyes. And these lubricants will really help. Thank you. Thank you, doctor. Uh, uh, Dr. Kumar, another question we have is, uh, during COVID, is it recommended to wear eyeglasses versus contact lens? Is the risk of uh, contracting COVID more with contact lens use versus eyeglasses, please? So let me clear some doubt. That's a very good question. One is, if I have COVID and I shake hands with you, COVID doesn't enter through the skin. COVID enters the body, I mucus membrane like the eyes, the nose, the mouth. If you're wearing contact lenses, there's no harm in wearing contact lenses, and you go out, I always say wear glasses or goggles to protect your eyes and your contact lenses. But suppose you go out, please don't touch any surface and then touch your eye. This is not the contact lenses or anything else, but we are then infecting the eyes. So as I mentioned to you earlier, that virus, best thing would be to wear glasses on your contact lenses and i also said wear a mask because your nose and mouth are protected best another way out is to wear a face shield and that will protect the virus coming to your eyes but if you're wearing contact lenses you have to be more careful so that you don't get infected because if you get infected the virus sticks on to contact lens too and that will affect you much more and affecting uh, affect your uh, virus so it is wise if you wear protect yourself uh, thank you, Dr. Kumar. Yes. And uh, uh, the next question pertains to uh, the use of, uh, uh, use of uh, screens with blue light. And uh, you mentioned using protective goggles. Is it something we have to use 24-7 when we are in front, like we are right now in front of the computer? Or is there anything additionally we can add to our computer screen rather than wear goggles? Yeah, so you, know, you really can't, you know, there used to be screen savers like initially, like a screen guard kind of a thing initially, but that's not very good. So best is if you're wearing zero number glasses, then you can have a blue filter uh, in the glass. Uh, you don't need to wear it 24 by 7 because uh, it's going to actually cause that much issues. The most important is to use it. In the so the point here is, uh, it is wiser to wear glasses with a blue protection, uh, if you are doing like eight tables, and between if you remove where well and remove, it's going to harm your eyes. Okay. Uh, thank you so much. And uh, um, uh, the next question is uh, more related to the current pandemic with telemedicine consults. Uh, when uh, do you think that an isolated require us to uh, go in to see an eye specialist versus dealing with it on a video consult? So 
I see this on a regular basis. The problem here is, uh, if you tell me you've got a red eye, it's very difficult to do a video consult because the red eye, if you read the textbook, there are hundreds of thousands. So we do try to avoid from coming to the clinic nowadays, but uh, if it's a red eye, we don't advise but to call a patient. Uh, if it is a simple number change, then yes, they can get in somewhere. If you've broken their glasses, then there's no other option but to get the number checked. Uh, if it's diabetes, then we have to check the retina, so there's no other way but to dilate. Video consult will help only management to follow up. So you've already been to the clinic and then you just have to get back to us and tell us as to how much you are feeling better. Is it benefiting you or not benefiting you? So then the video consult does help. Otherwise, uh, unfortunately for eyes, it's like very difficult to say something more and it's very, very important. Even if I tell a patient to send me an image of the right and an image of the left eye, they normally send the whole face, which to us has no much value because we are more specific to the eye and we need information. So yes, the consults do help and have a limited role. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Kumar. Uh, so uh, uh, typically we would have regular eye checks every six months, whether it was for our number or otherwise. How has this changed in the pandemic? Our, our regular visits for our eye check, please. So yes, uh, the visits are much lesser. Uh, but now I think it's opening up since last few days. I'm seeing that it's opening quite a bit. So there is nothing much. But uh, the, see, for us, we are uh, eye surgeons, so we mainly deal with cataracts. And these cataracts are basically uh, elderly patients with little scared uh, coming out, which I can very much understand. Uh, but uh, I really think it's taking a flight, and you should think that having a flight is very dangerous, but actually, flights. Uh, I don't know really you know that planes have lamellar. So my operation theatre here has some called as a lamellar. So in fact, to stay in my operation theatre is thousand times safer than staying outside because they're coming inside the operation theatre is going through multiple of filters. So it's very, very safe. So there is a bit uh, and a fear that this is not the right time to get operated. Uh, but at the same time, we are taking enough precautions in the hospital. You, you would know that our hospitals are also taking a huge amount of precaution. They're cleaning the chairs regularly, check the temperature. Uh, once the patient gets off the table, uh, we make sure that the chair is clean. The area of the sit lamp where we check the patient, that is also clean between patients. So I think, and the news is, Maria, you're surprised I have a staff of 55 and lucky none of them up to now touch would have got infected. It's not that they infected in my hospital, but all of them are wearing gloves, all of them wear a mask, all of them wear a cap, all of them wear a huge gown to cover the whole body. So we are taking adequate precautions. I'm sure all hospitals are doing that. And if you have, might have realized that I think the panic has gone down, uh, the ICUs, you will have more information than me regarding this, that the ICUs in other hospitals are now getting empty. For example, I see who, so the Anavati hospital, which was the closest, first was a fully COVID hospital, and now they've started really advertising. They are no longer uh, only COVID, they're open to elective procedures. So I feel that the thing is going down. It's having a turnaround process. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Kumar. Um, yes, you are right that the surge in the city, which we saw, let's say, mid-September, is kind of abating, both in terms of recipient needs, number of beds, but we have to remember that we're going into the festive season. Uh, people are going to let their guard down. I'm so glad that we have banned firecrackers. So at least there's no need for communal meets uh, to burst them and have any social interaction on that level. But the festive season, we are all preparing, both intensivists and us in, at Prana and other initiatives. We are preparing for some form of surge possibly happening 15 days later, closer to early November. So we're just grateful at least this month of October, we would see uh, far less cases reaching the ICU, which is really critical for us too. Yeah, thank you for that. Uh, the guys, uh, you know, Maria, that you read the news that France, Italy have declared a lockdown again after this period. Correct. Which really shocking because I don't know. I mean, is that what we are expecting? So I was a little worried looking at the news, but I guess uh, it's a little different response here. 
Um, well, uh, um, those countries in Europe went into a full opening. They were very, very particular about mask wearing, but the dynamics of the virus uh, from epidemiologists shows us that there is a geographic variance uh, uh, which we really can't explain. Even within India, we could have a different response to COVID. So, you know, within continents, uh, they have a second wave. Uh, they're talking about a second wave. Also, they go into a huge flu season. So it is a combination of two respiratory viruses that they are also very concerned about in the vulnerable population. Uh, so I really, really pray that we don't have the second surge in India and whatever we get post Diwali is contained successfully. Uh, perhaps Northern India with the smog that could play a very big role in concomitant respiratory diseases and COVID. So, you know, increasing comorbidities through winter smog will be, will be quite a catastrophic effect. So I think everyone is gearing up for these eventualities with an increase in number of cases for these reasons. And uh, yeah, we have to accept that COVID is here. The mask, as you rightly said in your very first slides, the mask, is the vaccine. At Prana, we have started a mask campaign where we really keep saying mask equal to vaccine. Till that vaccine comes, it's only barrier protection which can keep this kind of behavioral disease away. Uh, the next question we have for you is about headaches. Uh, how do we how do we connect a headache to an eye problem? Are there any pointers to tell us that perhaps this headache is because of a refractive error or some form of excessive screen time? How do we join the dots? So this is very common because you know that if you get a headache, you think you have to immediately change your eye number, check for this and check for a dental infection and check for blood pressure. These things are instantaneous. So the question here is, how does an eye number cause a headache? Well, it's very really easy to understand this. That what happens is, we need a perfect number to be able to see. When we are not able to see properly, what happens is we uh, have to strain our eyes. So the strain of the eyes and that effort to be able to focus leads to a headache. So this is very important uh, message that many times, you know, there are some uh, uh, patients who feel that, you know, the number is minus eight, that's too much for a little child, why not give seven? So if you give seven, the child is not going to read like a normal person. And then the child is going to strain to be able to focus. When the child strains to be able to focus, it will lead to a headache. And that's the reason why if you have glasses, the best thing, is to regularly do an eye checkup. For children, we say it should be done every four to six months. For adults, at least every year. Normally, adults number every one and a half years. It remains quite constant for one and a half years. If you wear a perfect number, at least the eye cause of the headache is taken care of. So it's very, very important besides the other things that you have to check the glasses. Uh, are there any eye exercises that you can recommend and are they different for children and the elderly? You'll be surprised I've got patients. Okay. We'll say, Doctor, you are given minus two. And then I went to this Uba Kendra and it's a in the newspaper. They don't take a single penny. They give some saline drops. I put the drops and the numbers become minus one. So the numbers go down. And it works. So what they do, you'll be surprised, Maria, these are scams which are going on. They actually make the patient sit close. They don't maintain the distance. So with lesser number, the child or the adult is going to see. And they don't take any fee, so there's nothing you can do about it. And you can donate whatever you want. And this is how it's been going on for years. So the question here is, the exercises, will it reduce your number? The answer is no. But there is a sit now, instrument which we give, it's intropin, which we all understand, very in a diluted form. And for children, use it once at night. There are some scientific reports and studies which is documented and says that this prevents the number from increasing in children. So the 
The thing is, there are no exercises. So you can't look right, left, morning, sun. None of this is going to help you to reduce your number. Okay, so it's important that in, another thing is some children develop lazy eyes. So lazy eye basically means in spite of giving you a number, they're able to read all the lines. Then in such cases, we do what we call as patching. So we do a patch of one eye and the other eye only has to be exercised for three hours or four hours continuously. If it's both eyes are lazy, we can alternate patching. This is like an exercise and this helps to improve the quantum of vision. So if you are reading the second last line, which is five line, then you will be able to read the last line over a number of lines. So this is the only exercise and if you have a or lazy eye that really helps. But there is no yoga eye exercise really that helps. Donkey praises his own team. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Kumar. Uh, do, uh, the next question is, do contact lenses uh, increase dryness of the eye? So if you have dryness, it will worst. But if you are wearing contact lenses, they will not fit. Lenses, yes, if you have dry eyes and you're wearing contact lenses, it will worsen. So there's no doubt about that. Uh, you are prone to more infections if you have dry eyes. So contact lenses in dry eyes, you have to be more careful. Nowadays, there is lots of treatment available for dry eyes. For example, there is a uh, diagnostic instrument called Lipidium, which uh, treatment for the kid flow. All of this is the latest treatment for dry eyes. Uh, if you get yourself examined for dry eyes, then you will actually know why you are intolerant to contact lens wear. But you have to put the lubricating drops, and now there are drops available which you can on the contact lens in your eye. So there are no preservatives in those drops, and that's the reason why the patients are more comfortable. Uh, thank you, Dr. Kumar. The next question is, uh, should uh, uh, numbered glasses be anti-glare coated? Is there any advantage in that? Because I think it's always offered when you go in to make new glasses. That's the first thing that they talk about. So uh, how useful is it? That's a good question. Uh, you go to any shop and they call UV coat. So there's no doubt that UV coat helps you. As I mentioned in my talk, the ultraviolet light is A, B, and C. And A and B can come and damage you. Uh, in the eyes, you know, the farmers who never have goggles while farm, obviously they never did and they never will. But they develop a region. So it's very well documented. Cat can you get closer to the mic, please? I'm so sorry. No problem. Cat tracks can be caused by UV light. And another important thing is, as I said in my talk, was age-related degeneration of the retina because of UV light. So having a coating is not a bad idea. Remember, when you clean your glasses, the coating can be off and it has to be redone. So that's one care. Okay? More useful of UV light when you're walking on the street, okay? And you're not looking at sun, you need to worry because the UV light is not going to take a turn and enter your retina. It's more important on, as I mentioned in my talk, sand, snow, because these surfaces reflect UV light. So sunglasses at those stages is more important. In your street life, when you're just walking on the road, yes, you wear UV protection sunglasses, but it's not going to enter right directly, so you don't need to worry. All right. Thank you so much. And is there a minimum, or, or rather I should say a maximum uh, amount of screen time that one should get exposed to in a day? And uh, I know the iPhone warns you about how much you use the screen, but just just a ballpark figure on, okay, right now I'm excessively, I've crossed my limit for the day. So hold back. It's very individual. It's like I can run 10 kilometers, you can run 20. But it's more than that is you should be comfortable. So you should not be developing dry eyes. You should not get tired at the end of the day. You should not feel fatigue. You should not develop a headache. Uh, if you're developing all of this, that means you're crossing the limit. Best is check it other way around. And as I mentioned the talk, concentrate on blinking. Concentrate on putting lubricant. Concentrate on your posture. Concentrate on the position of the screen. And if you want to reduce your brightness, you can do that. You want to increase your font size, you can do that. Just for your information, Maria, that green color is the most soothing to the human retina. That's the reason why we like the green grass. So some people even locate that the font 
your computer should be green. Oh, interesting. That will cause less strain for your retina to be able to see. So if you see that red light when it is highest, because you don't know the visible spectrum, red light is at one end and the blue light is at the other end. So in between we have the green. So remember, yes, uh, this, this does help a lot. Uh, these precautions will actually take you through. So there's no upper limit or lower limit. It's very individual. If you do all these adjustments, you'll realize that you're comfortable. Okay. Thank you so much. And the next question is about colored contact lenses. How harmful or uh, how do you compare them with regular contact lenses? Please. They're good. It, the only thing is, uh, you know, when you look at a colored contact lens, yellow, green, blue, yellow, they look beautiful on your phone. Huh? But when you put it in the eye, okay, it looks very different. The reason is your iris color is missing with that color, and that's why it looks different. So I always tell all the patients, you wear them. Now they're available even with a uh, uh, There's no harm in them. They're just like normal, like printed contact lenses. The only thing is that when you wear it, it looks very different. So it has to match your complexion. And that is an initial part of the whole story. Um, what, are, uh, what are certain tips you can give for elderly people with eye care, specifically meant for elderly people, please? So, I have noticed in my practice over the number of years is uh, nothing against opticians, but if you tell a 60 year old, when did you have a last eye checkup? He said, No, I got my glasses made uh, two years back and I'm fine. So, in India, opticians only they do not examine the eye to check different parts of the eye and help of the eye. So, I've had patients with glaucoma who lost one eye vision completely because they had glaucoma for years, which went undetected. And they always thought it was a lazy eye and nothing can be done about it. I have patients who are diabetic and they have diabetic retinopathy and uh, it's missed and it's gone. It's very important after 40, yeah, get your eye pressure checked, uh, get your retina checkup done every year. At our center, we insist that they take an image of the retina and keep it as a backup because they come out of five years, there's a comparison. Uh, Elderly patients who have fat parents who have diabetes, blood pressure, history. It is important that they are checked because glaucoma is also known to be hereditary. As a reason why these precautions have to be taken, have to go to eye doctor. They must get an eye exam done besides the glasses. So people normally think eye checkup means glasses. It's not that. Eye checkup, the glasses, one tenth, one portion of one tenth exams that the patient goes through. Thank you, Dr. Kumar. The next question is on diabetes. While suffering from diabetes, it does affect our vision. What are things that uh, specifically you would like to advise for diabetics? Golden figure in diabetes 190. You should have your fasting and PP below 90. That's rule number one. Now, if your diabetes is not controlled, the patient can come with multiple styes, multiple cysts, it's like abscess is a blip. Patient can develop conjunctivitis related infections. Patient's cataract can increase and patients can permanently lose vision because of diabetic retinopathy. That means swelling on the retina and so they are not able to see. They can also develop optic neuritis and vascular problems in the nerve. So for diabetes, it's very, very, very important that they are checked on a regular basis, control sugar, and these are the parts of the eye that can get affected by uncontrolled sugar. Thank you. And uh, the next question is on uh, refractive errors. So what are tips that you can give uh, uh, parents uh, so they, they, their children can avoid glasses and they don't get a number in the future? I will need two things. I will need the horoscope of the child. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm, many times I get this, how did my child get a number? How is it possible? And the, both of the parents have glasses. Sometimes it's a thick part of the laser pole, but that nobody wants to accept. So it's nothing that you can avoid. Glasses is just like normal growth that you have. The important thing is to diagnose on time. The important thing is not to develop a lazy eye. And if the child has glasses, they just wear glasses. When they grow up, they get contact lenses. They grow older, they get laser done. And the numbers you have. So, important here thing is check. Okay. And uh, you're the expert on LASIK. 
So uh, uh, tell us a little bit more on when is the optimum time and uh, how do you see your results from in your experience on LASIK? I have been doing LASIK since 1999. So many, many years. I have a third generation team. Uh, brilliant procedure because today who has a distance say minus six? I always ask them, what is the first thing you do with the body? And the normal reply I get is, I wear my glasses. Which I correct them and I say that, find your glasses. Once you find your glasses, then you wear them. So that's the second step and not the first step. So if your number is minus six, you're not able to see the wall across which is eight feet away. If you go swimming, you can't see anything. You get out of the car, your glasses flog. So yes, you can wear contact lenses. You can't swim with contact lenses very easily because the water goes in and you get infected. So for such people, like a lot of patients, Davy, a lot of patients, uh, because of them, they have to have drivers from railways. They must have six by six vision. So it's a very safe procedure. Both eyes are together. It's done the drops. There is no patch. Eye remains open. So there are lots of advantages of LASIK as a procedure. Only rule number one, it's not the age which is the limit. So I've done ASIC for women who are 15 or 16 years old, for uh, men uh, who are more than 20, 21 years of age. So it's not important. Age is not important. Maria, it is important that the number has to be stable for a year. If your number is stable for a year, you're fit for LASIC. And that's how it is. Done. So we can do LASIC uh, for a minus number and we can do LASIK for a plus number. So we can move either, we can remove even cylinder. So it's quite a safe procedure. Uh, regarding LASIK is a follow-up question. After doing a LASIK, is, it, uh, would, is there a possibility that I would have to wear glasses again? Very unlikely. But if uh, what we have noticed in much of years of practice, uh, some women uh, are delivery because they have hormone changes. So the number was minus eight, they may get 0.75 back. So you ask me what percentage of improvement from 8 to 0.75 is almost 95%. So some women, because of hormone changes after delivery, really do get some number back. But it's a very, very small issue and very, very small percentage. Okay. And about LASIK again, is it common to have headaches after LASIK? No, not common. That you're you, have, you have normally, my patients say, head is heavy for the first day. If they still find it, just simply look closer and it goes away. It's like breaking the circle. Mm -hmm. The next is uh, probably related to question that yes. uh, mute your mic, somebody, please. Um, I'm so sorry. Uh, the next question is related to glaucoma, and you did mention that it was hereditary, so this is coming off of that. Uh, since it, if glaucoma is hereditary, uh, are there any preventive measures or warning signs that I must look out for? No, glaucoma is very sudden. So, really can't make it out. The only way, it's like if you have head pressure, you have a machine at home. But there's no machine to keep at home to take your pressure off your eye. So, ideal thing would be to go to the house and get the pressure of the eye check on a regular basis if your parents have your home. There is no other method. Sometimes people have headaches. Uh, some people have feel lost, but those are the end stages. Uh, some people have the closure with the severe hand with vomiting. So it's very individual depending on the type of glaucoma. But the most ideal thing would be to go to an eye specialist and get the pressure. And how often would you recommend uh, for a child with parents who have glaucoma to check pressure? We just look at the children are concerned, we don't really, unless you have congenital glaucoma, which is quite rare, it's called Buftalmos. But otherwise, what is important is uh, the child becomes 20, 20, 40, becomes an adult. Uh, then once in a while, uh, after 40, is more relevant to the regular check of and with today's science, we do something called experimentary, so we check the vision. We also scan the nerve of the eye, which is called OCT, and we keep the image, uh, which actually measures the cup, and we all check the pressure. So lots of things that are done in today's science, and that can be monitored. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Kumar. It's been like an ocean of tips and balls of wisdom for every one of us. 
uh, uh, we have a couple of minutes left. Any of the participants, you can unmute, please, and ask questions if you like. You're welcome to do that. Congratulations for what you're doing. Uh, thank you so much, Kumar. Thank you. Really, your support means a lot. Absolutely. Yeah, we just had to ask you, and in a second, you said yes. Um, we really appreciate that. We've lost your uh, video feed, please. Okay. Uh, Tejal, Mita, Nadi, Therese, Tana, Riddhi, any questions uh, for Dr. Ib? Unmute. Tejal, unmute, please. I realized how important it is, doctor. Thank you so much. I joined in late, but I've realized because I've spent the first five years of my kid's life at an eye doctor. Wow. Uh, because she had a lazy eye. Yeah. Which we had to go through a lot of exercise programs to correct it. And with my younger daughter, I got to know that she's got two numbers. I'm a bit conflicted about that because you see under dilation, her number is different. And otherwise, it is different. Why does this occur? That's very easy to understand because there is a muscle inside the eye, and it's called a ciliary muscle. So when we dilate, that muscle stops acting, and so the number comes out. So you don't have to worry. That's the number. So the number that you get after dilatation is what you should wear. And that I should go for the plus and the minus combination. It may be, but don't worry about it. So technically, I should take the number that comes under dilation as the glasses recommended for her? Yes. Okay, so thank you so much. Get used to, but over time, she'll get used to. Okay. Because I just, I thought it was a bit funny, you know, when I heard it first time. Yeah, yeah. But that's correct. Thank you. Lovely. I'm sure you all have absolutely enjoyed this eye-catching uh, webinar and once again sincere gratitude uh, Dr. Kumar uh, and I leave you with this little message from all of us at Prana many of our uh, warriors as I call them are all here uh, Nadi, um, Amita, Tejal, Riddhi and uh, a host of others who help us at Prana we are here for you we care for you I do hope uh, this pillar especially and all of our previous pillars of positivity and those which are yet to come. We do hope that it will just bring uh, more hope and optimism and make you look bolder and better uh, onto the brighter side of anything in this pandemic. Uh, we have just two pillars, uh, uh, three pillars left uh, which we'll be having over the next few Fridays. And thank you so much for joining us. And again, a very big thank you, Dr. Kumar.